sometimes struggle to get up in the morning or wind down for bed at night. I used to find it so difficult. I woke up with no sense of positivity and brightness. I was void of motivation and spirit. This changed completely when I started waking up with a Lumi body clock. These incredible devices mimic the light and colour of a real sunrise and sunset, transforming the experience of waking up and going to sleep completely. Rather than being suddenly woken up with an alarm clock, the Lumi body clock will wake you up gradually with a natural sunrise. The Lumi body clock has been shown to improve the quality of sleep and awakening and to boost mood and productivity in clinical trials. You can personalise your sunrise and sunset from 15 to 90 minutes with their clinically tested unique natural light and more than 20 sleep and wake sounds. We all deserve to sleep well and to wake up feeling fresh. So if you're finding this a challenge and you want to try a new approach, go to lumi.com. You sort of don't realise, do you, just how much it's just sort of threaded through every bit of your life. I mean, the, the Lush seems such an obvious name for a brand, right, for a company, especially one like ours. Um, but in actual fact, it was it was an orbital track. Lush 238 or something like that is called by orbital. Uh, I like, you know, I like the track. And uh, so... You know, doesn't matter. Pretty much, it runs everything, everything in my life, I suppose. Really, um, best summed up by one of the one of the album choices with High Fidelity. You know, High Fidelity it just feels very comfortable. The film, the the original one, uh, although I thought it was going to be dreadful. I was I my wife took me on my birthday, and uh, you know, and uh, I thought because I'd loved the book, I thought oh, it'd be awful. I, I mean, Nick Hornby, you know, obviously, again, older bloke with a, a, a love of music. Um, and I just loved everything about it. I really, re you know, I recognised and identified with just expressing myself through tapes in those days. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, easier to make a tape for someone than it was to actually have a conversation. Uh, yeah. And then, and then, so High Fidelity was exactly right. You know, the snobbery, the whole fucking thing. Excuse my French. The whole thing. <laughs> Yeah, it re that film really captured the joy of of records and, yeah. and collecting. I, and I love it in that bit where they where they ask him how he's reorganizing his records, and uh, wasn't it autobiographically or? That's <laughs> just you know what I mean. Like I don't know how many times I reorganize my stuff, but you know, I've never tried to do it autobiographically yet. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you keep a record collection, a vinyl collection? I don't. I yeah. Uh, I what what actually happened was uh, each time the 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 medium changes, I tend to just go with the latest. I'm a bit of a neophyte. I just go with the latest thing, and then I then I look back and I oh fuck, I, you know, I should never have, <laughs> shouldn't have got rid of my whole vinyl collection things like that. But I did. Um, I still got, I mean, I've still got vinyl. And in fact, it was interesting just thinking about the the five albums that the, um, where I've got them on vinyl, you know. I, I, well, I, I was just having a little look on on playing them because uh, I just buy buy the tracks, buy the stuff on on iPlayer, you know. And I was looking through at the number of, of, of this one of these tracks I played 227 times on my computer, let alone anywhere else. So that. What track yeah, was that? Oh, it's it's not good either. It, it because the 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 language uh, shows you know sort of I don't know a little bit of my inner self. It's over and over by uh, by Teddy Thompson, um, mm. uh, with lines like "I make mistakes and I make them again." <laughs> so it's a fairly sort of reflective track. Do you know what I mean? Uh, uh, is, is, is that is that something that you'd say is true of yourself, Mark? Yeah, I like the. Uh, I like this particular. Some time ago, I came up with a plan, shit on myself so that no one else can. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I don't know what it is that appeals to me about that whole song, but obviously it appeals to me enough to play it 227 times just on my computer. But I don't have that album on vinyl. I think if I had it on vinyl, I, I would have been able to escape with less plays and not be so embarrassed. Yeah, it's... I mean, that's the thing with, with vinyl, though, is like the idea is very nice. So when you say, oh, uh, like... I wish I hadn't sold my record collection, which a lot of people do say that. But like, yeah. you know, you can have a wonderful trip to a, to a record shop, come out with loads of stuff, 
that you think you're going to listen to. And at the end of the day, with well, a I, busy life, you're just I always like, oh. listen to it once. I've never, ever not listened to anything I bought. Um, but then obviously when you've made a mistake, uh, you, don't, you, don't, you might listen to it twice, but you don't listen to it much more. Whereas, yeah, I the, well, the main thing I, I, I like as well about vinyl is the quality. You know, no yeah. matter how much, how much high fidelity I try and get into an MP3 or whatever, I you know, it's not the same. So whenever I can, I probably will have a favourite. I'll buy vinyl. So the Eagles of Death Metal album, I've got that on vinyl. Uh, and the only inconvenience there is getting up from your seat to turn it over. It's... <laughs> that is a fantastic album. Um, I do love that. I like. I mean, I like Eagles of Death Metal anyway. I, yeah. They, I, I went, we went to see them, uh, my wife and I, in London. Um, and I, I don't know if you've been in a Lush shop, but we have a certain mm. kind of, uh, of of person serving you. Uh, anyway, the whole place was just full of my staff members. It just felt great. You know, I mean, I didn't recognize <laughs> anyone, but everyone was tatted up. Do you know what I mean? They all had various color hair. Uh, they were all wearing black. I mean, it was just perfect, you know. <laughs> But the really sad and tragic thing, of course, the next gig they did was in Paris. Uh, so suddenly I was struck with, oh, my God, people, I, I won't say like me, because I, but people I like very much and I want to spend time with were in that gig when the terrorists struck. Do you know what I mean? And, and that, that, that was a shocking thought. Do you know what I mean? The, the, a band I like so much. I mean, he is a bit of a nightmare, Jess Hughes, but I, I like the band anyway. Uh, and then, you know, the thought that there were people there, you know, being killed that were like, you know, were like my staff members. That was, yeah, that was really quite poignant and, uh, I mean, a horrible situation anyway. Yeah, but, uh, it, was, it, it was really awful. And it was, you know, long after I first started listening to Eagles of Death Metal, like, and, and it was probably, I hadn't listened to them for a little while. And yeah. I, I, I wasn't, I didn't go to that tour. Um, no. And, and it just seemed like such a horrible and such, such a random, like senseless thing to. Well, it was anti American, I suppose. And uh, I don't know. I never really understood the, the ins and outs of the terrorist action. But, uh, but it was, it, as I said, because of the people, you know, my, my colleagues at work, all much younger than me, but the people I like to spend time with. There was a great um there was a great picture in Japanese uh GQ magazine where we I I was sat with and everyone was completely tatted up and sexually ambivalent, which I really liked. <laughs> it was a great picture. I've got it on my wall at, at uh, the lab. But, and, and, yeah. And in terms of um Eagles of Death Metal, did you see the have they done a documentary about? what they've been through like since then so I've, no I haven't, I haven't seen anything uh, have they done something i think i heard that they did a documentary about kind of going through that oh in paris and then and oh well i i mean uh, yeah uh, it, it must you know the what the mind boggles i i will watch the documentary do you know where it is is it on i think it i think it's on netflix i think it is i'll i'll try i mean i i, I think i I don't know why my algorithm has let me down there, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, one of these, one of these um, uh, top records. But I mean, that—that's the thing—is that we are inundated with so much um, content. And I mean, just doing this podcast, I literally have a list of like three thousand albums or something that I'm working my way through. Um, oh. Well, three thousand songs at least from yeah, uh, yeah. And everything that I listen to, more or less, it's very rare uh, that I get a recommendation from a guest who's been on the show where a song comes on and I'm like, oh, I'm not so into this one. Like most yeah. of it's like unbelievable. So it's one of the big, big perks of, of doing this podcast. Um, do you struggle with the amount of stuff that we are constantly being inundated with content wise? Uh, do you use social media much? Um, how yeah, how no, do you I, choose I, to listen no. to it? Lush and herself, we've all come off the classic social media things because of the the business with the suicide rates. And obviously, because I talk about product on there, I, I attract a lot of, of young women in the target age that 
might might be affected. So we came off um, all the classic ones. I'm on Twitter, um, and obviously I watch YouTube, but uh, but otherwise we're we're not on those. So I don't. No, I. Uh, I mean, I'm always asked by people because they're always surprised at uh, the music I've got. How do I find new music? Um, but I, you know. Well, I'm like every music nerd. You know, I, I, I rummage around in uh, what's in my bag, for example. You know, I'll just, I'll just watch that on YouTube until I, my ears go strange. And then I make a list of all of the, the stuff and then I download it all and have a good listen. Um, or, you know, whatever. You know, whatever, whatever I can... I like to just sort of nosy in. And the thing is, because I've been like it all my life and now I'm old um it's surprising how much stuff you've got and how much stuff you know about and how often it comes up I'm really into poetry so lyrics mean a lot to me as well so I you know I, I can remember lyrics from quite a long time ago which I think people find strange I mean it, it was weird that I didn't choose a Leonard Cohen album but in a way I I quite like the new, and and I I have been listening to Leonard Cohen albums for a long time. Uh, started with songs from a room when I was whatever you know, seventeen in my bedroom, and uh, and continued since then. So I, in a way, you know, I know them too well, and uh, they wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily fish them out, you know. Well, I feel like choosing the the high fidelity soundtrack track kind of has has allowed you to get in. The fact that it you has. like quite a few artists. Uh, I, I, I just was having a little listen before I came on, you know. Um, and because uh, I, I also like Stephen Frears, the director of High Fidelity, the film. And I like Jack Black talking about how frightened he was of Stephen Frears and how he tried to give this really good, good performance. Um, because it was the first really, you know, really sort of good break that he had. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and, the, and let's get it on again. Ninety-seven plays. I just looked that up. So <laughs> him singing, "Let's get it on." Uh, it was just such a magical musical moment. Do you yeah. know what I mean? When they're all expecting, I can't. What was it? Oh, Sonic Death Monkey. They're all expecting, aren't they? I did a product called Sonic Death Monkey. He got a bottle. We get sent him a bottle, Jack Black. Uh, yes, but the fact that it turned out to be, uh, yeah, let, let's get it on was just so lovely uh I think yeah, it's a, great it was song. a brilliant moment and i mean the soundtrack just has everything in it it's got yeah well, I, all music it's got i mean it, it it was perfect and i love things like the beta band anyway so when it had you yeah. know when, when they're there put the beta band on and just seeing if they can sell five albums by saying nothing just tapping their feet and i just love all that that's all the bit i like most you know it really it i mean really we don't we, we don't dictate what people play in the shops you know because i i again i like the whole idea that you can pick what you, what's going to be on today you know by selecting an m m or something do you know what i mean some some random way of getting who gets to choose the music this morning it, play what it, you like. it seems like you've got this very kind of calm attitude to like running a, a huge like unbelievably successful business and particularly with this um really admirable thing of um, going off social media because like a lot of companies and brands and prominent people would, even if they did kind of agree with you about the social media, um, mm. the pitfalls of social media, which I think more or less everybody agrees on. And, and uh, I, I, the dangers. it's one thing to worry about the pitfalls of social media on mass. I mean, you can look at Twitter at the moment, it's chaos. Mm. But, the, but it was the fact that the whistleblower told us quite clearly that they had data showing Increases. that the algorithm, they, the algorithms were not being controlled, and they encouraged people to, both Brits and and Americans, to think of suicide, women to think of suicide, and that I think it was um, the Americans was eight percent of women who said they had thought of it, and I think it was something like fourteen percent for the Brits, and that was it. You know, I mean, what can you do with that? You can't. Yeah, and then we're going to attract people on there, so we're even more culpable than they are. And I mean, to be honest. You can't come off social media. People talk about you on social media. People are using it. That's fine. But we can at least make some kind of stand and, and make some sort of comment. Um, because, you know, 
you've got to be responsible for your algorithms. Mm. You, you know, you, you can't, there's so many of these companies, like Amazon, we had a court case with Amazon uh, where they promised to, to not misbehave and then they misbehaved. And when we go back and say, you misbehaved, I can't remember what it was, 120,000 times. They said, yeah, we can't stop it. They can't stop it. You know, so then we have to come to a different arrangement because the the algorithms are out of control. Do you know what I mean? They're not they're not able to control them. It's not sometimes they're not just doing it purposefully. They just don't know how to stop it, and that's part of their business model. Anyway, that you know, I mean, it, it, it's still a worry. I mean, I'm still. It's probably the most common question I get from my colleagues at really? work. You know, my staff members uh, will say, uh, "I think we should get back on social media." And, yeah, because we're all bloody addicted. That's why. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I, I was addicted. Everyone you talk to, we we're all addicted. You know, it, it's the... Uh, yeah, so so did that mean that you too stopped? You said you're you're on Twitter, but... I, well, I, I what I do on Twitter, I just put a bird sound on there every day that I've recorded or one of my friends has recorded on that day somewhere in Europe. So that's all I do on Twitter every day for the last three years. There's been a bird song uh, that you can hear, uh, which is lovely, and I really like that. And people don't tend to to troll you if you do that. What, what is there to troll? I do love <laughs> I, I do love that because I mean, as you say, the, the, a lot of this stuff has got us addicted, and um, and then a lot of it has also divided it. A divided all of us where 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 we maybe wouldn't need to be divided and listening to a good record or reading a good book or spending time with someone i know this is such like bullshit cliches but it is actually no 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 it's not a bullshit cliche it's humanity it's right and i mean you know being able to talk about a um one of my favorite movies of the last couple of weeks has been mrs harris goes to paris i don't know if you've seen that it's a remake Oh, it's just absolutely lovely. Um, and, you know, and then you can talk to friends about that, can't you? And they can, I, I can't see how you wouldn't like it. It's a bit like not liking Enya, you know. You, <laughs> you have to like it. <laughs> you couldn't not like Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. Mm. And and but, so so now now that that's happened, um, like when when did that happen? And will that do you reckon that will be it it for you and and for Lush on on? So like. I think the truth is that, you know, and we all know, we, we're surprised how long Facebook's lasted, and that's pretty much coming to an end, I think. And then Instagram, well, not yet, but, I mean, so many people have got their businesses on Instagram. That's more worrying because they, you know, because the, obviously the, you know, Meta, is it Meta they're called now? That they, they're milking it much more. Do you know what I mean? So the people with businesses are really struggling because they've been charged more and more to reach the same people. I'm I mean, I you know, it's a weird state of affairs, isn't it? That you have a party, <laughs> you invite all your friends, and then someone tells you you've got to pay to hear it, to talk to them. It's like, hang on, they're my friends. They're people I've invited. How come suddenly you're here in my party telling me what I can and who I can, who I can't talk to? Yeah. So, and I mean, yeah, yeah, not... that, that is that is essentially the um Yeah, it's not right. You know, if you think, you know, a program like your own, you've got content you, that you're providing. Well, then, so you're providing the content. It should be paying you and saying thank you, not screwing you for that extra few quid to get your message across. So well, we've never we've never been on social media. We've just relied on growing the audience through the actual podcast. But I mean, my... aside from the fact that it's 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 independent, and I, yeah. I physically don't have time to chop all the podcasts up into like thirty second clips out of context. And plus, we'd probably get guests calling in, being like, "Oh, I don't like that bit. Um, yeah. I don't I don't want to be taken out of context like that." So I, I I don't know, but I I think you're right. It's just very very rare that somebody um, I'll talk to somebody and they've actually followed through on it. I mean, myself included. I, I mean, I, I well, I mean, I'm not really on on social media. Um, um, I don't. I don't tweet or Instagram or or Facebook, and not for, not for business either. But I have done, so I feel like even in that way, I mean, it's, it's a huge phenomenon, and I like it in many respects. Yeah, uh, I like looking at other people's social media. and you know, I like it. <laughs> you know, it's it's a weird thing, isn't it, with our phones? I mean, I'm really very keen on my phone, and but really now I'm not on social media. I just send the pictures to my 
to my friends or to my family. I got a huge family anyway. It's just like there's always, you know, two or three people. I shared a podcast this morning with about five people. First thing, you know, it's just nice to share it, but not necessarily on on social media. Yeah, yeah, I think you can still get a lot out of it. Um, yeah, but, but in any case, it seems like you. It's not going to be the thing that affects whether or not you're thriving. Um, and I, I wanted to ask before I forget, um, because you've obviously had a lot of success. Um, there's one th- um, one um, venture of yours that that you've closed down, ECC Records. Oh, my company, yeah. yeah. It so, that. so how 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 when did how you start it, and then how come you closed it down? Well, it was it was me and Simon Emerson, um, who who was in Africa Sound System. He founded that, and uh, and we had a lot in common. We still have, uh, but he's not well, and uh, he's got cancer. So. That pretty much didn't help. Do you see what I mean? And then, and then we sort of, I think we decided in the end that we just would call it a day on that. I mean, we're still, I'm still producing music with Lush, so um, I'm still producing, you know, these weird autobiographical albums I bring out nearly every year. Still doing those, you know, they're very weird and eclectic. And it's, uh, you know, what I do is get people to do covers of of my favorite tracks from that decade. Uh, people I know, like Teddy Thompson or or others, um, and they do these great jobs on them, and, and uh, then we produce those and sell them through the shops. I mean, it's a bit weird. It's it's absolutely bloody awesome, is what I think it is. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's also I feel like it's rare where somebody is passionate about music, but obviously you know of, you had this label. But yeah. you know, Lush doesn't necessarily like specialize in music, obviously. No. But, like, you feel like doing something that that is authentic, well, it, to you and you just do it, and it's and it works. It's, and it's good fun, and music music binds a lot of us. I mean, um, I've got a colleague who I mean, quite a lot of them are musicians or have been musicians, or you know, and so we try to include them as well. You know, get them to do a track, or and then put them with a good producer, and you know, zap it up a bit. And, uh we got wig was one of the last ones i did wig is a hairdressing for us but obviously it's also a a, a track um what's that on, on your head a wig uh b52 so we got the Dulox back together now she works for me the person used to be the head of the Dulox, and the Dulox is just this bloody bonkers girl band you know um so we we literally flew one in from New York and one from somewhere else, put them with a good producer, and they and they did a cover of Wig, which was good fun for us because I like the product. Uh, it's a great name for a product. I like the track. I like the previous band. I like them. Uh, it's just all nothing but pleasure, isn't it, all the way through. And, and Mira, who's the head, she works for us, um, writing stuff and doing other things. So she used to work in the Carnaby Street shop. Um, she and I used to play. Um, tapes when tapes were a thing when she worked there wow and uh, how many years have you have you done these albums well I've, I've done i'm just we're just doing uh so the first one was the 60s 70s 80s so i've done three and now we're just doing the 90s now just just quietly we've only done the first one we've done is um in the bath you know the lemon je- cover of the lemon jelly in the bath because uh, obviously <laughs> So it's a given for us. I think the whole thing will be called in the bath when it comes out. Uh, so we're just, we're just working on it all now. But one of the problems I've got when I'm working with them is that the uh, the stuff it's a bit eclectic. Sometimes, well, you've just said that of my choices here. Um, that sometimes they the others have to say to me, Mark, can we have a few bangers? We haven't got anything that you know that one might recognise here. Okay, right. I'll have a rummage. <laughs> Well, I mean, eclectic. I suppose you've sort of, with with the uh, high fidelity, you've cheated in a way because you've basically been able to say, oh, "I do like a lot of classic stuff," um, yeah. by choosing that soundtrack because there's everything from Dylan to Stevie Wonder, and there's even the Beta Band. There's everybody like so. That's yeah. that's brilliant. But the other, I guess, the other stuff, you know, it's not really like in, indie doesn't really mean anything anymore in in, in a way. No. But it's it's sort of it's that it's alternative rock maybe you could say. Yes. Um, what what about um, High Violet? Because obviously the National brought out a lot of fantastic albums. Why? I mean, did you they are. 
I mean, they're my favorite band at the moment, the national, um, in whichever manifestation, you know, uh, I'm a bit of a Swifty. I have to admit, I must be the oldest Swifty in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, doubt, I doubt it. Everybody bloody loves Taylor Swift. I do love Taylor Swift. And so when she starts to work with uh, with a guy from the National, uh, it's just like, I'm in heaven, aren't I? <laughs> I've got Taylor I Swift. Her best album. album. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Well, uh, it was two. It was two records. Two albums, two albums. And then, uh, yeah, now she's gone back to more, I wouldn't say it was more conventional, but um, still lovely work, you know. But, I mean, great. And I, as a lyricist, I think she's really lovely. I, we did it again. We did a product based on one of her her products, um, her tracks. Oh God, I can't quite remember what it's, what it's called. It's just a bath bomb, um, and it's to do. Oh, it's the lakes. That's it. Because obviously we can make a bath like a lake. Um, and she had this this just fabulous bloody you know lyrics to the lakes. It was a bonus track on on the, I think the first of those. Um, collaborations with a guy from the national and it's just lovely i mean it's it's got just great lyrics you know how much are her words worth uh things like that you know because she's always got that everlasting battle hasn't she with the producer whoever it was that stole all her stuff or, oh yeah because so. she's she's re-recording all her hits yes re-recording her albums which is pretty awesome thing to I do know, i like the feistiness of it all that's why yeah also just I mean, how many people could pull that off? Oh, yeah, but I mean, no one. I mean, she broke the internet when she brought the last one out, didn't she? The you know the one she bought out about a month ago, which mm. so yeah, I did. But I don't get up at midnight to buy it. I just point out, not that bad. But I do buy <laughs> them. Today. So so music plays uh, like a huge huge part in just your general creativity. Yeah. Was that the case? Um, when Lush started, has that just been prevalent yes. like, throughout? Uh, yeah. All the way through. Just, you know, you uh, we, we've got a perfume called Karma. It, you see, it's not straightforwardly. What, what what you do is you sort of, you set the mood with the, with the music when you're doing the creativity. So uh, with Karma, it was Radiohead's Street Spirit. That was popular at the time. And and I was listening to a lot of Radiohead and, and Trance and other things like that. So I was listening to to that track. And that track, for me, in perfumery, you have high notes, middle notes, and bass notes. So this perfume, Karma, I wanted to get it all creamy middle notes, rather like, you know, the, the, the Radiohead track, Street Spirit. So I was trying to get this all down there in the middle and not much higher, not much low. Or in, in a case of a massive attack track at the same time, it would all be deep stuff with the tiniest little flower here and there in the perfumery. Um, so and then and then we there were a couple of guys uh, who were shop fitters who were like old hippies that worked for us. And they came in into the lab to ask me something. I can't even remember what they were asking. They had they still had a van with a flower on the side, right? And they they looked out at the window and they could see a traffic warden putting a, uh, you know, a, a thing on it, a fine on it. And then one of them said to the other, oh, bad karma, man. And I'm, I don't, you know, I hadn't heard bad karma since 1973. I, you know, the actual words. Uh, so I, that's when I decided, oh, I'm going to call this perfume karma. And, um, I de- and then I added some sort of 1973, uh, uh, like grubby notes from incense and damp bedrooms and things like that. And it worked very well in the end. It's very popular. <laughs> so uh, is is that is that is that similar to how how you know a lot of the products yeah. are conceived and just yeah. So so therefore they they have a contemporary feel. You know, it might be um what was I thinking about? I mean you can still pick old tracks. It doesn't it's not always I'm playing something new and then trying to come up with something so in the case of the lakes that that was a given do you know what I mean because as soon as you heard it you thought oh no, i can't do that but i i've been fiddling around myself and jack my son who, who does creativity as well just with chelsea morning just trying to make something where butterscotch pours out and uh you know just that that track which is obviously you know right back in the 60s is it so, but it, it could be anything. You could just, be, I mean, the other day, I was just desperate to do a coconut. Um, <laughs> I mean, and it was this simple. I just said to Helen, who I work with, I, said, I really, really want to do, I want to put the lime in the coconut, you know. 
I got, you know, there's <laughs> that old track, you put the lime in the coconut and mix it. So I've got a coconut lotion, you know, with a with a good lime smell, purely for the pleasure of putting the lime in the coconut. It's a lovely product. People like it. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure I'm sure they do. Uh so in term in terms of some of the other like records that you've um selected, yeah. like the, well, the only the only act that I hadn't come across before, and this is a beautiful um album um by Jackie Oates and John Spears. Yeah. Um who, but who are Jackie Oates and John Spears? Well, Jackie Oates um has been a, a an independent artist singing folk music for 20 years. Um and and when when uh, we had our own record label, Simon and I, um we she was on the record label. Um so that the album I've chosen there is the first one she's done since the album, the, the record label's gone. And, and when I first heard about it, I, you know, I thought, because she's such a, it's such a traditional feeling and it's so folk clubby and lovely. And when I first heard she was doing lace, something with bobbins and lace, I thought, oh, I'm not sure this is for me. Do you know what I mean? So I was a bit dismissive in my head. And then, of course, I listened to it, and I just, I got, it's just so lovely. It's like, you know, it's like 1952 school, and it's like, you know, oh, I just love everything about it, and him on the accordion, and and no, not one of those tracks has ever been done by anyone before because she's researched all of it. You know, she researches lace songs people used to sing while making lace. I, it, it couldn't be more obscure if it tried could it and yet you know the, the minute I, I i listened to it oh it's really lovely jackie's done it again you know <laughs> so i uh, all of that you know i used to be a morris dancer when i was a kid um because you've got a beer every time you danced you danced outside a pub three dances one beer uh so it was a cheap and easy way of getting beer but uh <laughs> But when you hear all that traditional folk music, I mean, I've always liked folk clubs and uh, used to go on a regular basis, like every week to a folk club and hear all the the different artists and get into them or not get into them. And they, sometimes they would come and stay afterwards. And, uh, and, and is, that, is that how, how you discovered Jackie? No, it was a purely an introduction from Simon Emerson. Simon Emerson oh, right. had another band. Simon Emerson had a band. And this is, again, where it links in with us. So I'm a bird watcher and Simon Emerson's a bird watcher, which is why the thing was called uh, Emerson Corn Crate and Constantine. The Corn Crate was just, you know, a joke. And, uh, and occasionally we put it at the end, we put the, a Corn Crate call at the end of an, an album just for a bit of fun, you know, just after everything had finished. Uh, anyway, he had a... he had a, What happened when we first got together was he had a band called the Imagine Village. And it was a whole group of uh, established folkies that had first of all been, maybe some of them been connected with bands like Steel Ice Band. And, um, and he he toured with them. I mean, all, he had Benjamin Zeph Zephaniah doing poetry, he had Billy Bragg there, he even had a bit of Paul Weller in it. Um, and he gave me some free tickets. I didn't know him. It was just because we were all bird watchers. Uh, so as a lot of birders, we all got free tickets. And I went along to see it. And it and it was very English. That was the whole idea. It was it was celebrating Englishness. And I suddenly thought, oh, they've never done an English spa, have they? You know, no one, you know, you can have a Moroccan spa and you can have a this spa, but no one's ever done an English spa where nobody has to take their clothes off. And they can all hide behind, you know, all the traditional English things like, do I have to take my clothes off? No, you can keep your clothes on. Uh, and then then I phoned him up. I, I had to summon up my nerve a little bit because I hadn't spoken to him ever before. I, I knew he was a bird watcher. So I, because I wanted him to make music for the treatments. So each treatment would have its own soundtrack. And then we put the bird sounds in it and all the rest of it. Anyway, I phoned him up. Because being Simon, he thought my spa, he thought I had a chain of spa grocers. <laughs> so he had to phone he had to phone someone else and say, This bloke wants music for his spa spas, you know, his grocers shop. And uh, you know, 
and they said, well, don't be stupid. He's got spas. He wants music for spas. <laughs> anyway, he did He did stunning with, with um, a whole load of really good artists. I mean, he's a great band leader, and, you know, and he just gathered all the artists together and did all these marvellous tracks. for. So every time you have a spa treatment at a lush spa, each each thing has got its individual soundtrack, you know, and, and um, some of them are almost choreographed to that, you know, they're almost like dances. And it makes a huge difference. You can imagine just sitting, listening to music in your room makes a difference. Uh, being massaged makes a difference. Lovely products makes a difference. Put them all together. You can really, you know, pull out all the stops. Yeah. yeah. It, it seems like you get to be extremely creative with what you do, whereas a lot of people who are running huge businesses yeah. I speak to do not seem to... Like, it's a oh, challenge. It's a challenge to keep the creativity up and the and the boring bits down. But so you, I you would, manage? Yeah, well, I've actually got a business coach and that's a whole aim. Uh, she asked me, you know, how, how am I doing with that? I, you know, I'm trying to get the finance function in my my life down a bit at the moment. She's popping in tomorrow, so I should be able to talk to her about whether I'm achieving that or not. Yeah, yeah. It depends, you see, on, on the state of the business. Obviously, I mean, you know, I wouldn't want to big up my financial credentials too much. It's just horses for courses. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I'm, the main thing I want to do is creativity, and the main thing I'm good at is that. Um, but I do have a lot of experience with business because I've been in business for a long time. Yeah. yeah it, see, it, it, you do come across as, as very relaxed uh, about it. And, um, and well, I'm not always. You should try me at three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm, I'm anxious about business. Three in the morning. I don't do the 3 a.m. emails to people anymore because they're too unpopular. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm paranoid and all worried about it all. But it, I mean, it that that happens to everybody. People get get worried in, in the middle of the night, and uh, with yeah. certainly people uh, depending depending on you, I can only imagine what that must be. No, like. I don't worry about too much. I depend on them. Bear in mind, uh, you know, and and if you get cool people that you know that are engaged, that's the thing about having people that are into music and people. I was asked by, we've got a company, you know, nearby, John Lewis, you know him. And uh, the guy from there said, how do you get your staff? They're so committed. And I said, well, you, you're very fussy about your staff, aren't you? He said, yeah. I said, I can remember going for an interview with you once, with John yeah. Lewis. You made me pee on a stick. Not with that man, didn't, but, you know, and all sorts of other things. A whole day interview and all of that. And you couldn't have a beard. You couldn't have a moustache. You had to do, you know, all this stuff. So I said, when, well, when you finish doing all that, and Marks and Spencers have finished doing the same, I said, I have the rest. Mm. They're all much better when they're not being processed. And do you know what I mean? Just mm. do, but, you know, we'll, back to, we're back to high fidelity. They just, I love that whole thing in high fidelity where the two guys arrived. So we're only supposed to do a couple of days a week, and they come in every day, and they can't get rid of them. You know, that's how you want it. You you want people that want exactly. to be there. Yeah. Was that the way um, that that you you've always been since you know the mid nineties? In what way? What do you mean? Well, I like that. In terms of like, you know, you <clears throat> you've never had like a st like stuffy hiring process, like a uh, like like a job uh, or whatever. I mean, I have no idea because I don't. You know, if we have somewhere, we will we'll have had somewhere. Yeah, someone would have done that, won't they? <laughs> oh yeah, me so personally. Big, yeah. So yeah. the thing about being a bit lackadaisical and a bit, you know, is yes, probably somewhere someone did that. But, yeah, but on the on the whole, that yeah. That, otherwise, that's... otherwise, it wouldn't be a true picture of a hippie organisation, would it? You know, someone <laughs> somewhere is always doing one of those things. The the main thing is try to get as many people as possible who work for you that laugh at it. Mm. Yeah, that's well, the thing. I mean, when people talk about how do you get high ethical standards, employ vegans and people that are passionate about stuff, you know, then they boss you about it and you do what you're told, and Bob's your uncle, you know, you're away. <laughs> yeah, you? but it, it, it also just seemed like the the um, that whole John Lewis, you know, um, thing that you were talking about is like maybe in the past people would have. 
you know, thought, oh, that's a great way of doing things. That just, like something like that just seems so outdated now. And it's going to become more and more outdated, like to the point, you know. Years and years ago, in the 1970s, uh, was when I applied for that job in, in John Lewis. Um, I applied, I did that for one day. And then the next day I went to a place in, in Knightsbridge where the guy literally must have talked to me for three minutes and then said, well, I'll give you a go. And I loved him, Colin. I mean, it, you know, and that and that's what made the difference. You know, you just realise that, you know, give me a go. If I'm any good, keep me. If I'm not, get me out, you know. It's not, you know, it's not rocket science, is it? It's just, let's get on with it, you know. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely and, right. But I'm sure that some people, you know, I do know that they, I think the interviews for Lush can still be a bit tough for people, but I think there's much more to do with having to go on the floor and sell stuff or talk about stuff than it is to do with being on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's come across that, that you're extremely passionate and get on very well um, with, with the people that are working for you. So that is, I mean, obviously, a, a, a amazing reflection on on lush um but uh i I didn't want to get too sidetracked from the music because we've not yeah good uh bella um you've mentioned teddy thompson uh already but why this album specifically and and also quite um quite close um like four of the the records came out in about a kind of five-year time span um so so you definitely do have an appreciation for kind of rock and folk and alternative stuff that came came out like around that time yeah i think of of all of the the albums well like i said to you when you when you think i've played over and over 227 times that's an awful almost embarrassing amount of times isn't it um i think that's fine i I must confess i've played other songs way more than that oh good (laughs) i mean i i played other songs more than that but i i just i when i had a look i thought well that's quite a lot of time um there's teddy thompson is just superb in my opinion i mean uh his voice is brilliant he's fussy and he he, and he he's particular he you know it's both his mum and his dad uh, are artists and uh Mm -hmm. but he's also fiercely stage fright shy do you mean it's quite a palaver for him to get up and do stuff he's all right once he gets going um it just but why is that? Is he, is he has he ever sort of said just or he just gets the nerves oh, real bad? Well, I mean, uh, when I've been to a, a gig of his, sometimes his mum's there, you know, or something like that. I've never seen his dad there, but um, I, I have no idea. But I mean, he he famously in a previous album did. Uh, one of his lyrics was, I must get up, I must go out, I'm sure there's something I can't do without. Uh, his lyrics are just brilliant. Uh, and they sum up, they sum up so much about so many of our, you know, personalities at certain times in our life, you know. Um, you know, that, that whole thing of introversion. I, don't, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously, I'm not a heavy extrovert, but I do really like, personal time i mean the thing in the lab i'm not with a whole load of people i'm not talk to anyone i'm listening to music and and doing something for me yeah i mean it'll go out for other people but so when i listen to his his lyrics yeah i just feel very comfortable with them <laughs> i don't i haven't actually laid in bed and thought i must get up i must go out i'm sure there's something i can't do with that uh but you know i've been close <laughs> Yeah, different uh, it, it, it's different times in your life. It's not always, yeah. The times when you're full of it, and times when you're really not full of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is a lyric that speaks speaks to you, or what I think would speak to a lot of people. Um, well, a lot. And in those, in better. I mean, home. When he when he he's got this track called Home uh, about going home and being really keen to go home, and he gets home and his mum spoils him and. After three days, he's desperate to get out. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, that whole whole thing. But no one has expressed that quite as well as that. And then the one I can't have, there's just so many tracks on that uh, that album that, you know, that classic thing of only wanting the girl that he can't, can't have. There's three girls that want him, but he doesn't want them. He wants the one he can't have. You know, 
just yeah just so many uh, looking for a girl is a similar thing i mean th those uh, anyone going for bella will will, will enjoy the, it the lyric the lyrics are the really um that's it that's the key but he's str he's got this great voice i mean when you watch him singing it's a hell of an effort for him is is it's absolutely there's a wonderful thing about birds song Right, only birds have got a syrinx. Only birds can produce bird song, right? Um, and when they do, every bit of their body is geared up to producing that song. The lungs, the the the, the whole way it works. The, there's a, a special center in their brain for songs, and everything is geared up for that. And they practiced, and they, and that Teddy Thompson reminds me of that. <laughs> you know, uh, we've got him to do some covers on some of the yeah. the albums. He's very fussy. If it's not a well-written song, you forget it. And do you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's just yeah. He's cool. I, I I love I love singers where it's um you know not necessarily a struggle, but they have to, to work yes to get a note out or to or I to... mean, I don't know, I can't speak for him, but nothing seems easy when you're watching him. That that's <laughs> some of the most thrilling stuff to watch. Yes. Um yeah. When people that really have to try, and you yeah. watch, and you watch them put that passion and that effort into it because they just care the quality, about them. the quality of his singing. I suppose in a way that that also means that he really crafts the songs because he doesn't, you know, it's not it's not easy for him. So why why would you throw it away? And yeah, why not make sure it's good? You know, the quality. The lyrics, of the, the lyrics on on this on this record. There's a lot um, that. Well, at least I can relate to, but I think a lot of people. Um, yeah, I think people that are into music tend to be a little bit introverted, and I think, I think Teddy speaks to them. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. A lot of people are quite introverted who who are into music. Well, Mark, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. But I, I wanted to finish off by asking a question uh, that I hope isn't too um, cliched. It's not going to be what advice do you have for people, um, but it's along a similar line because there are a lot of people who are listening to this, who are aspiring musicians, creatives, yeah. whatever. But the, the, it, a lot of the time, it's the boring stuff, especially today, um, that people struggle with. Um, certainly some people have, like occasionally like write to me about stuff like this. Um, I, I think one of the most useful things on, on the advice front is how do you, if, if you do, do you have like a method for managing your time uh, because when people are um, trying to trying to do ambitious stuff, creative stuff, um, the days just run away from you. So how how do you manage your time? Because you must be unbelievable. I get up. I, I wake up very early. I do stuff. So I, I've I've already done a load of stuff by eight o'clock. Um, could be anything. This morning I listened to a podcast. Had a swim. Uh, did various you know various things like that. Um, I did write quite a lot of notes about a problem I had. So journaling, I think, is really vital because then you get you got to get your thoughts straight. If you can get your thoughts straight, you can get your life straight. You know, you've got to know what you want. You've got to, you know, and most of it, you know, I suffer a lot because I, I have a thought and I think it's a fact. And thoughts aren't facts. So you get if you if you journal and you work at a journal. The nice thing about electronic journals is you can cross it all out and rewrite it until you've got it right, whatever you're going to do, whatever it is you're going to do, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, so that you know that when you're saying the different things, first of all, you've given it some proper thought, uh, which is more fair and more balanced. Um, so, yeah, I think it's vitally important to to think through what you're going to do. If you are awake in the night, again, that's the thing I do. In the middle of the night, I will journal, and then I'll refine what I think I might have a little neurosis top 10 sometimes I might, I might write that down so what what's worrying me the most and then I, I, I try and start at 10 and go up to the most uh, and then that helps because you you know take the piss out of it a bit uh, just eat it for what it is uh, but managing a time and then and then I do yes I do tend to know what I'm going to do during the day I think that's the other single piece of advice well two things really uh, do it now, get on with it, do it now, just do it now, <laughs> whatever it is, just do it now. Uh, you know, if you have an idea, do it now, uh, phone now, do now. Uh, yeah, you can regret it later on, but well, whatever, at least you've done it. Uh, 
so I think I think do it now is definitely an important one. Um, I was going to say something else, I've forgotten it. Eh? But, uh, yeah, well, the, the the procrastination thing of uh, I've got I've got some I, I I love the poetry pharmacy right the poetry pharmacy she takes little bits of poetry she rolls them up she puts them in tablets and then she gives you the uh, the the prescription so this is mine for dithering right. <laughs> And basically, if I think I'm going to dither, I have to take one of these tablets, which means getting a little bit of poetry out and reading it, and it and it's encourages you to act. That's such a cool idea. <laughs> Dithering That's tablet. So original. <laughs> that is really awesome. Where, where, how did you find that? Uh, she, I was a a judge for a retail companies in Britain. She was one of the runner ups. And I work with her now. We're working on maybe a poetry book in the new year, a uh, business poem. So I use a lot of poetry in, in, in business. And uh, I just love her. I just love everything she's done. But what I like most of all is she really doesn't want success. She's hidden in a tiny village somewhere. Uh, you know, and she I tease her all the time because I said, why don't you get a London store? You know, oh, no, she might be too successful. She likes to do these herself. You know, she used to have an ambulance go to cook, go to uh, you know gigs and and uh, be the poetry pharmacy at the back. You could go and get a bit of poetry for whatever ailed you. That you know, is right? such a great idea. I, I am looking out for all those people all the time, and then I do contact them and I do work with them. Yeah, yeah. she's done a whole load. I've just put done three poetry bath bombs where she's done different bits of poetry in each bath bomb. Uh, you know, and you drop it in the bath and then you lie there and then a bit of poetry comes out. Perfect. I, I, we're just we're just about we, I don't know. We don't I'm looking around and see if someone else is gonna hear me because I don't know where we are with it. I do know we finished it and I think we painted it, but basically it's like a bath bomb, but it's a speaker. Uh you drop it in the bath, it, yeah. You can play uh what do you do in the bath? You can play that to yourself. The bar. Nice. I, I don't know when that's coming out, and, and I'll get into trouble now for saying it. But it's great fun. That that sounds incredible. Yeah, I I, I really have to say it was um, a complete pleasure and honour to talk to you. Um, thank you very much for taking time. Um, well, it's nice to do it, and uh, and and for selecting those those records. Um, yeah, yeah, really appreciate your time, Mark. And yeah, it's definitely uh, set me up for the rest of the day here in Denver oh, a lot more inspired and hardworking and you know doing it now and all of the all of the rest of it. Yeah, doing it now. Doing it now. And and keep pushing on no matter what age you are, what's going on. Just keep going.